preparation that went into your performance. So how did you choose how you're going to perform, what outfit you're going to wear, all of that? Yeah, so they told us that it had to be royalty themed for uh, the 10 years of royalty theme of the pageant. So I went with the fiercest queen there ever has been, Marie Antoinette. But I put a candy spin on it and made her pink and whatnot um, and put some stripper boots with it. Um, because Candy's not quite as classy as Marie Antoinette, but she trying. Today I got up at like nine and pretty much started getting ready right away. Um, I'm For the record, it's five o'clock, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a pretty new queen. I just started doing drag in um, October, so hopefully I'll get quicker, but right now it takes me quite a few hours. How would you characterize yourself and how do you set yourself apart from the other queens? Well, I'd say I'm sweet too. I definitely don't dabble in too much shade, but um, Candy's definitely a party girl. Um, you know, she's sweet as can be, but she's definitely from the other side of the tracks and like, she can get down. <laughs> Are there any specific drag queens professionally that you look to for inspiration when getting ready? Oh my God, totally, all of them. I mean, especially as a new queen, that's sort of, you know, the only thing you can do is look to everyone who's come before you and learn so much. I'm obsessed with queens like Alaska, obviously obsessed with Bianca, our host. Right. It's such an honor to have her here. You know, we've looked up to her for so long. So yeah, so much inspiration from other queens. The question is, if you were a superhero, what would your powers be and why? My superpower would be to make everyone tanned. I'm wearing so much soft tanner that I can basically just hug all of you and you look like you went to St. Tropez. biggest thing that makes a good queen is to have a big heart because um, I think <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> no really I mean I heard I did I didn't make this up I heard somebody from RuPaul uh, from RuPaul's Drag Race once say that it's not as much a drag competition as it is like a heart competition because right. um, really at the end of the day everyone can learn to do makeup and hair and dance and whatever but um, at the end of the day drag is supposed to make people feel, people feel good and, yeah. Well, win or lose, what's next for you as far as drag goes? Because you are a newbie, so is this going to be something you're going to continue on with? Absolutely. I love drag. I think it's so fun. What's next for me is to get better at my makeup, to get better at my clothing, uh, to just learn more and hopefully, you know, uh, get out in the New York scene and um, just experience life as a new drag queen and, yeah, just learn as much as I can. Backstage with Jessica James following her awesome performance. How are you? I'm very tired, very sweaty, uh, but very excited still. <laughs> Looking forward to this whole thing. Yeah. How long did this take you and how did you make these big decisions of what to wear? Um, it took me a few weeks to decide what I was going to do, what I was going to wear to make everything. Um, and then today it took me just a few hours, about two, between two and three, uh, just to make sure everything looked right. Probably sweating all off now, <laughs> but uh, really just made sure I looked okay. Half of it was at home, half of it here. A lot of my mentors in the city uh, always tell me to make a story out of my performances or try to do something that any, everyone can sort of relate to. So that's what I really did. I really made a story out of my performance by doing a princess story that everyone knows and loves, Cinderella. Uh, so just tried to make that something that everyone was going to know. Yeah. All right. Well, you just mentioned mentors. Who are some of your mentors that you look up to? My mentors here in the city are my two drag moms. Their names are Britta Filter and Ms. Cracker. Um, and they just really do their thing. They know what they're doing. They've been doing it for a few years now. I really look up to them. They're great at giving me advice when I really need it. Here we go. If you could have dinner with any celebrity, what celebrity would it be and why? I would, I, this is so stereotypical, but I would probably say Beyonce. <laughs> Because, because she's such an inspiration to everyone. Uh, well, a lot of people. But who doesn't like Beyonce? Uh, Aside from eyebrows, yes. what is a quality that makes a great <laughs> drag queen? Um, confidence. Okay. I, I think confidence because even if you fall flat on your face, you have to get up and pretend like you meant to do it. <laughs> What's 
up guys, I'm backstage with one of your queens, Tiffany Darling. How are you feeling before your big performance? Super ridiculously anxious right now, but it's gonna be okay. How exactly did you choose what you're gonna wear on stage? For all of my outfits, I wanted to do a progression of myself. So I wanted to show my elegant side, my classy side, my classic side, maybe even my little slutty side. Because <laughs> if to have class, you still have to have ass. You have to, it's a hand, it goes hand in hand. What sets me apart, I would say, is that over at starters, I'm an actor. So I would say I'm an actor before I'm a queen. So this is all just my costume, it's my garb, and this is my whole character. And I feel that with all of my theater experience and what I do, it just sets me a little differently from people that just do drag. Mm -hmm. Because I see it as a whole, I see it as a whole, this is a role I'm playing. The costume takes a little longer to get into. Certain body parts are very uncomfortable. <laughs> but it's, it's all okay because it's a character. Because I'm Tiffany Darling of the Darlings. <laughs> Here is the question. Please describe your idea of the perfect date. <laughs> My perfect date would involve gelato and watching Meryl Street movies. Well, Miss Tiffany, darling, you are one of the sweetest contestants that we do have. You're killing me. So what is the one last quality that you would say that every drag queen must have? Aside from your sweetness, of course. Oh, stop. You always have to make it authentic. As flamboyant and strange as some of the looks may be, there always has to be an aspect of realness that makes it authentic, that makes it slightly real and slightly human so people will connect with it. I like that. Oh, thank Very original. You. Good, I just came up with that. <laughs> <laughs> So we're backstage with Miss Sunday Lush right after her performance. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm well. It looks like your feet are hurting. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little. <laughs> How did you choose this lovely outfit and all your other outfits that you were wearing? Well, um, the beginning of my performance was inspired by like Britney Spears circa like 1999. Like very kind of like Michael Jackson-esque with the blazer. And then afterwards, I kind of like transitioned into like Donna Summer, like disco. So those are like the two people that inspired everything. So how did you land on those two artists though? Are they personal favorites of yours? Yeah, they're just my personal favorites. They're like every day on my playlist when I'm getting ready, taking a shower, you know. All right, now how long did this all take? Because you have a lot of makeup and a lot of stuff going on here. Yeah, um, I've been doing drag for like a little over three years. So the make yeah, so the makeup took me like an hour, hour and a half, okay. and then the rest just kind of fell with it. If you were an ice cream flavor, what flavor would you be and why? Well, Bianca would probably remember this, but in the 70s, there was a dietary supplement called AIDS Chocolate, and I would be the AIDS Chocolate flavor because I'm a positive flavor. I think what sets me apart is that I'm pretty. No, I'm just kidding, that's shady. <laughs> no, I think what sets me apart is, uh, you know, I represent kind of like a new wave drag, very young, very fresh, but I'm a traditionalist in a lot of things. Like I make a lot of my costumes. So I think that's what sets me apart over a lot of young drag queens. Um, I'm gonna keep on doing it and see where it takes me. So. Our top two queens are Miss Candy Shirley and Sunday Lush. Here we go. Our second is Sunday Lush, which we got first on the and it's Kelly Sterling! All right guys, so we're here with the winner, Miss FIT herself. How are you now that you're official? I'm good. I feel very royal. Do you think that the performance and everything went well? I think it did, yeah. I lost only three nails, so I think that's like, you know, great. That's why I won. So now we asked you before your performance, what's next for you? Now that you have the crown and everything and the sash, what is next for you? Well, next I'm going to take a nap, um, but I'm going to keep my crown on, so that's what I'm going to do with the crown. And 
What advice would you have for next year's contestants now that you're official? Just have so much fun. It really is just about, you know, entertaining the crowd and putting on the best show ever. It's not, at least for me, it wasn't really about the competition. It was just about entertaining people. And if you're having fun, the crowd's going to have fun. So just have the best time. Well, congratulations and enjoy your royalty. Thank you so much. All right, guys, that's a wrap at the 10th annual FIT Drag Pageant. The Divas definitely brought it this year, but ultimately it was Candy Sterling who took home the prize. I'm Kristen Dudek for WFIT, and make sure you check out all of our coverage at WFITNYC.com and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. I'll see you next time.